It's always fun to have you join us today on the Hotspot Super Eagles Watch Podcast. Victor Godfrey in the company of the wise men talking about Babaji de Guerrero and Olawale Adegun. Guys, how are you guys doing? It's good to have you here. Well, it's, there's no um, <laughs> camels or Sapphire and Maya yeah. and Gold and Frankincense. Ah, mm-hmm. nah, oh, but wait. Yeah, yeah, you call me wise men. You don't yeah, give me gifts. Yes, sir. Uh, wise men, in terms of your they... knowledge in football. Oh, Bring no. the gifts. The wise men were the ones that actually gave people gifts to. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't know. I give you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the road now, yeah. We are associating <laughs> wise men and gifts. Okay, that's, good. How about you gifting our fantastic listeners and viewers for knowledge we'll take that. of you know football concerning that's, the Super Eagles of Nigeria? That's we'll take that. Right? We'll take that. And let's talk about talking about wisdom and wise men and mm. experience. We have one of our own in the national team talking about the captain of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, Ahmed Musa. Mm. The question now is: He has been to two major pinnacles of African football tournaments, hasn't played. And the last two games hasn't also featured off the bench. Question now is, why did you take him? You've also forgotten to mention that this guy is the only guy who scored them the most goals for us in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And that counts for something. Mm. I mean, this guy scored a brace against um, almighty Albi Celeste of Argentina. Mm-hmm. Another two against so, Iceland. And this guy has been ever present from day so, one. So if you're the highest goal scorer for your nation at the World Cup, does that mean you have a free ticket to every... Andrea, he has got... Um, Eight appearances in Africa's most prestigious tournament. Mm-hmm. Nobody is raising a storm. Yeah. So why shouldn't Ahmed Musa's inclusion but and Andrea, participation played, be a cause for worry? Does he play? He, he, does, does, he? does he start? Does but he, he play? play? Does he start? Does he play? He played. Where? In the last game. Yeah, but did he, he start? Scored? I mean, Ahmed Musa. My my question now. Listen, yes. my question is this: right? I'm not saying the inclusion of Ahmed Musa is not a good thing. Yeah. I'm just simply saying that if he's not going to be on the pitch of play, why take him to the competition? Yeah, but I think I think one one thing we also fail to understand as maybe as football fans is that yes, I, I, I we get what happens on the pitch, mm-hmm. but everybody sitting in this room, this table of men, knows one or two things about how important the off pitch can also be a factor. Yeah. And how it can influence the outcome of what is that whatever is going on on the pitch. I mean for example we've seen where captains become like a modern day superheroes for mm. the other players and i think that's one of the things i mean that brings yes he may his legs may not as be as fast as you know his yesteryears but you cannot take away the level of experience that tournaments like this bring the likes of rigo Besong also went to come um, also went to nation's cup even when they were not playing yeah yeah they went even when they were not going to be the main guys you know that okay Rigobert doesn't have his legs, but you can't you can't replace that with years and years of experience. Now I get it. He's not coming in, he's not playing, he's got some better players in this situation. But we're not in camp. We also know for a fact that some of these players are literally, literally young stars in in their length and breadth of experience. Mm. You cannot come. Musa has over one and five caps for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. No player in the history of our football has scored more goals at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. That should count for something. Now I understand what you're saying. It doesn't mean automatically that's a free getaway exactly. into things. But the question is, what is he bringing to the table that we are not seeing? And I think that's a lot. Let's even take uh, a look at the US, the Davis Cup system in yeah. tennis. Yeah. The captains don't play. In fact, they are not playing captains. Yes. Leon Smith for Great Britain. Bob Bryan for US. Sebastian Grosjean for France. These guys don't play. Guess what? They even pick the teams... For the Davis Cup, no, I'm at most tennis, even picking anybody. Though, tennis and football are quite different. I know. Different, I'm, only, I'm only trying to. I, I, I don't think this is false equivalence here, mm-hmm. but I think that Musa being in here. I mean, let me give you the example of after the Equatorial Guinea game. The word from camp was that Musa summoned the players before training and told them, "See, the weight we're carrying is the weight of over 200 million Nigerians, yeah. and we need to deliver an next, an next game." Did we deliver? Indeed, yeah, we, we did. did. We, yeah. did. we did. So that is some leadership coming from Ahmed Musa, and you cannot buy that. Okay, in fact, that leadership you cannot put it so in if, numbers. If that's the case, right? Yeah. Rather than have him come in as a player, he yeah. can come in as a part of the technical crew. So he should retire. I'm not saying. Are you retire? <laughs> <laughs> he still, he still plays active I'm football. Yeah. I, but I, I, but think, I hope you guys see my point of view. Whereby we, where you see an outfit, no, an outfit player, no, yes, I do. Just being there. It's not. We're talking about a top choice goalkeeper here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this yes, yes, I do. Attacking, when, and, and Godfrey, I've said this time and again, when a 23 or 25 men squad go to tournaments, not all 25 players always play. Yeah, true. So why can't there be a spot for Ahmed Musa? Although, on the flip side, you get a feeling that with Ahmed Musa, there's a general feeling that he's denying a, a youngster or a new face a spot. a spot in the team. Mm. It is legitimate. Indeed. 
But when you go to tournaments, you want to win. You don't want to develop the next young star. Yeah. So if you want to win, you go with your best legs on and off the pitch. Okay. And Ahmed Musa represents it. Oh, very well. Since we are talking about uh, Ahmed Musa, the man in question today is actually on our Fly on the Wall segment. And he shares his thoughts as to many, you know, to the critics asking the question, should he be there, perhaps the supporters like the wise men in the studio. Uh, he has Ahmed Musa with his thoughts on his lack of game time with the Super Eagles. Yeah, it's not that easy starting from Nigeria League and today um, I've played a lot of tournaments, the Champions League, World Cup, Cup Duration Cup, African Cup, not that easy. So whenever I look back, I would just say Alhamdulillah for everything that I've got in football. I have a target that I want to, that I, that I always said to myself, so that is what keeps me going always. When I get to that target, everything will, will be done. I don't have any message for anybody, so everybody can say what you want to say. So for me, it's just, I'm just playing my game, that is all. So for everyone that is thinking that, I don't have anything to say about that. Get a 100% bonus when you recharge your MTN line with your Momo account. Download the Momo app now or dash to 671 hash to enjoy. Welcome back to the Hot Sports Super Eagles Watch podcast. Of course, as you know, Hot Sports are the official media partners of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Victor Godfrey and the company, I call them the wise men. They said, no. the what do I call you guys? I, now, not the wise men. We have Wale and of course Jude. The, 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 the hot men, hot men are hot spots. Okay, the hot men are hot spots. My guy. Okay, hey, my hey, guy. Ask the hot. My guy. <laughs> Re <laughs> Re Re <laughs> Re <laughs> now we have the hot men and hot spots. Yes. Now, guys, let's talk about the on field captain, assistant captain, if you will, of yeah. the Super mm -hmm. of Nigeria, goal scorer. Coming up at, you know, what you call the clutch time, yeah. you know, and um, he has spoken in general about how, you know, the, the players have had to raise their game, especially with that big encounter we had last time out. Your thoughts on William Trusekong? Solid. Solid footballer. Um, I think he's one of those guys who, over the years, have, have grown in his position mm -hmm. as a member of the, as a mainstay in the team. If you check it in the past four or five years, he's been in that... He has grown from being a fringe player to being the man. Mm. Whether it is being paired with Semi Ajayi these days or being paired with Oyinbo Wall, Leon Balogo in the past, oh, yeah. or Kenneth Omero, he's just trying to, he seems to be that mainstay guy mm. who every other person is like, Soja goes to that come, Barak no the fool. He, he so seems to be the barracks. Come, he seems to be the barracks. He seems to be that guy, that guy that is there. So when you have a player like that, in, in a way, it helps your team. That you are, and it helps the goalkeepers as well. But unfortunately, mm. not in our own case, you know, because sometimes when goalkeepers there to see a certain face every time, you know that okay, why you laugh? I know, you know I know who I'm going to call up. I know you're talking about. It doesn't help our situation, but because sometimes goalkeepers feed off the kind of energy and leadership yeah. that their defenders have. And boy, you boy, choose the conquest. Boy, you boy, a leader. And we saw the way he took that penalty, very commanding. Mm. And yeah, even though some people said, oh, Victor Simon should have, but I thought sometimes given the kind of season, or rather the kind of tournament that Victor was having, it was important that a captain led from the front and allowed him just if, if he had lost that penalty he was oh still my chilled. God. That would have been... I think he was he would still be chilled. Nobody if you come at him he's a captain of the team he can mm. show that it on. If Osimi had lost that penalty, if he had taken it, it may not be the same to the tournament and this sure. is that we were playing in. And he stepped up to the plate and he he did the most important thing. I think for us as Nigerians we should be grateful that we have Captains and I just been very lucky over the years, Wally. Really. Yeah, we, the we, man of captains we've had, yeah, even we've had, before JJ. Yeah, charismatic captains. Very charismatic. Um, for for Trust, I was worried that he was on the outside looking inside mm. and with the super eagles. Remember, he's been frozen out mm -hmm. for like a year. He wasn't involved on the Jose Pesero, and Jose Pesero finally listened to the voice of reason, brought him back into the fold for this tournament alongside players like Kenneth Omero who might not have the captain's armband, but is a leader in no, the he's team. A, he's a leader. You know, and for, for Trust, is football education vast, majorly in the Serie And see, when your football education or your football journey goes through Italy, it means that defensively you're going to be sound. And that's what you could also see with the line. You know? The moment he went to Torino, his football trajectory in terms of his knowledge, just, I mean, mm. he finessed it. Mm. At the moment, look more also, you could see he's putting in the work up front. So that's what the Serie A does to you, and that's what he has done. But Chuku is there to, now. Let's just hope he yeah, something so, happens uh, but, but true second, no, like he, you he said. Needs, I, listen, we all know your views on Chuku is there. So <laughs> that, that, that remark wasn't as if, oh yeah, I'm hoping for it. No, you, we know what you feel like about Chuku is there, by the way. But guys, I want to ask you, <laughs> semi-final, 
Not a bad. Ninety third minute penalty. Do you see what Trista come to take it? Yes, I Who do. else? Uh, I'll go. I, I, yes, I, I a bit do. of fun fact, gentlemen. I mean, this is his third straight African summit of football. Even mm-hmm. use that in the best tournament in African football. Uh, this is the third time in a row he has scored. 2019 against South Africa. Mm. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, I think it was against uh, Equatorial Guinea or Ethiopia or Sudan. I can't remember in Cameroon and now here again. But we have to do on uh, a very quick break. Before we do that, let's go to Fly on the Wall, where we see the man himself in question talking about Trust Air Kong and his thoughts on Nigeria's next big game. Get a 100% bonus when you recharge your MTN line with your Momo account. Download the Momo app now or dash the 671 hash to enjoy. I think it was just, uh, it was an important uh, moment for the team. Um, I think everybody wanted to win. That was the, the job first and foremost, but I think the way we all performed together and uh, the team performance that we showed um, was something that we knew we had in us, but uh, maybe we hadn't displayed it yet as of uh, as of the the most recent game. So um, I think this was a massive confidence boost for us. Of course, it was a difficult game because playing here in Abidjan, uh, they had a massive advantage. Um, but I believe so much in the team, and I think I said the same thing after the Equatorial Guinea game. Um, that yeah, there was also a lot of confidence to be taken from that game because we created so much uh, and we don't give away so much. So that's always a good sign of a, of a, of a winning team. And uh, yeah, luckily everything went our way. Um, but yeah, we have to work hard to uh, to deserve that luck. And I think uh, we did it. Yeah, I think yesterday um, when you come in after the game, there's so much emotion, uh, adrenaline. Um, I think we just tried to enjoy that moment um, because I think you also have to. Uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy when you work hard and you deserve to win. Um, but yeah, today the conversation was directly about uh, the next game on Monday, um, getting a result there. And um, yeah, I think we all know that this is a very long way to go. I think uh, well, we also were good in group stages, um, but it really starts when uh, when a knockout starts. So first we need to secure our place. Uh, we want to go for the first place in the group uh, just to get the advantage. Um, so we need to win on, on Monday. Uh, same as we approach every game, you know, we're taking it very seriously. Um, I think we've uh, the preparation of the games have been good for both that we've played now. Um, and I feel like in the camp, all of us know um, what we need to do. So I think we can take the confidence from, uh, from the Ivory Coast game. Um, but we're going to be preparing well in the next couple of days to uh, yeah, face a team that's also going to want to win. Um, because this last game in the group stage is always tricky. Everyone's still trying to... Uh, um, get themselves a ticket, so it's going to be a very difficult game. Get a 100% bonus when you recharge your MTN line with your Momo account. Download the Momo app now or dash the 671 hash to enjoy. Welcome back to the Hot Sports Super Eagles Watch podcast. Victor Godfrey in company of uh, the Hot Men. Yes, sir. Uh, this episode of the Hot Men. Yeah, nice one. Yes, <laughs> that one, that one, yes, you did, of course, Wale. Go, 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 go. You enter. You see that way. Now, obviously, gentlemen, very, very briefly, we don't have much time. Uh, looking forward to that big final game determining the next uh, look of proceedings for the Super Eagles. Yeah. Um, it's a game that you're expecting the Super Eagles to be a bit much more relaxed. It's a game where you're expecting them to have um, a bit of a change in the setup. It has to be attacking wise. Mm. Against um, the Ivorians, you get a feeling that it was uh, a much more defensive setup. So against Guinea Bissau, we have to go in there and go guns blazing. Yeah. Um, I'll be looking for if if every target was caught four, then we should be probably trying to double that. Indeed, All right. I don't eight. Think- Yes, yeah. it, it, okay. yes. I don't think it's far fetched actually. I think it's actually possible, but it will be too much. But maybe five or six. <laughs> right, but I think it's going to be a good game. I think um, Nigeria knows it. They just have one thing don't get a point, win. Get the mm. maximum vol- volume on that particular game and let's see where it goes because I think it would, it would bolster the level of confidence. And above all, Victor Simen should be on the score sheet this time. It, it will help him going forward because we need him yeah. in that deadly, killer, lethal state. All through the tournament. Now, many thanks to our fantastic uh, guests in the studio, of course. Uh, not the wise men, the hot men, talking about Baba Yadi, Guerrero, and of course, yeah. uh, Olaole Adigun. Now, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. Until next time, be good, keep it good as a sports fan. It's bye from us and bye for now.